Eventually the last float plane takes off and as it disappears into the distance quiet descends upon the land again and it's that moment that most people realise they're now deep in the heart of wilderness. They are now committed to the journey. This is a vast wilderness. We were flying into Archery Lake and proceeding down to Bloodvane Village. But each of those map sheets covers a thousand square kilometres of terrain, almost all of it wilderness until you reach the shores of Lake Winnipeg. Our flight in had been early enough that we could actually set up camp and then take an hour's paddle up to the east end of Archery Lake to visit the pictograph site. These are very special places places for reverence and I feel very much the same as entering a stone circle in Britain or a cathedral. Quiet and due respect. They're created using red ochre and oil from sturgeon. Canoes and animals are often depicted but here is something quite special. Here is a medicine man holding in his hand a bag from otter skin with magical objects and above his head there are bolts of what appear to be lightning lines of power we left a small quantity of tobacco on the ledge below the pictographs something that links us to a tradition that is hundreds maybe thousands of years old Our tree lake is actually on two levels and this is the junction. Uh, this is from a previous trip but such good footage I thought I'd include it. And we lined down this one because what is just beyond is a massive rock. But we were soon into our own set of lining. Water was low and meant a lot more rock was showing and things that could be possible, well. 
All the information we were using came from the excellent guide by Hap and Stephanie. It's available from his own website. This is from the guide and at the top is a, a map of a whole section of the river and then individual notes on rapids and if they require more and if they need more information a more detailed diagram is put down below. All this information then I've transferred over to the main map, save me looking at the guidebook all the time. I've put in individual rapids, where the, where the portage is and in addition uh, I've copied the kilometre distance to uh, the end to Bloodvane Village the Hap gives in his guidebook. Not only do you have to protect yourself physically, you have to protect the boat. It is our only way of travelling through this wilderness. Broaching the boat on the rocks at the bottom of this rapid could either lead to breaking the boat or make it irretrievable. Not saying I'm prepared to chance in wilderness. This is a really good example of carrying a rope in a white water context. The loops are either side of his hand. No loop drops down and comes back over the other side. This way, if anything goes wrong, the rope cannot tighten onto his hand. And I've seen that happen with people that are careless. Those loops are all separate. Mining is a satisfied skill in its own right, but we were rapidly realising that with such low water we were going to be lining a lot more rapids. Rock everywhere and some stuff that you'd normally paddle across or round easily, it was just too easy to broach a boat. This is Stonehouse Falls and we'd portage, as you look at it there, we'd portage along that left bank and the campsite was just above the flat area where Claire is busy tending the fire but in the morning with the sunlight just coming down the gorge it was absolutely stunning. It had been a summer of fires and only recently had the river reopened and this was our first evidence. Fish number one. The river at this point had become a series of narrow lakes. Even so, there were still portages to do to link things together. But now our problems were about to start. These trails of ash were where the fire has followed root systems, and with the wind picking it up, picking up, 
it was blowing back to life. Fire, man. We'll put that out. I can catch so quick. Well, we better get out of here. This was now getting deadly serious. The smoke was beginning to blow across and we were not going to get shelter from that even if we could keep clear of the fires. We chose a rocky ridge which was surrounded on two sides by water and the other two sides by marshland although the grass in the marshland was very very dry. It was nerve-wracking. We kept a watch through the night. Uh, every hour someone would get up the lichens and everything in our area were tinder dry. We just needed to keep checking things. In the morning, the wind had dropped. We could see ahead of us again. The thick pole of smoke had dissipated. But outbreaks of fire all along the banks. And we could smell the smoke. In fact, we could smell it for several days more. Turn now, Jason. No, you stay. Stay on your own side, there, Bert. You're good. You're good, Jason. Look where you are. Your stroke's good. Look where you are.
Now it's slick in my rope. <laughs> Should we say no, not a third? <laughs> what, what? Jonathan, come backwards, come up the slope. Come back up the slope. <laughs> I now have clean pants. <laughs> I put my clean pants on this morning. <laughs> That's not what I expected, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> The three previous times I'd run this rapid, it was very pleasant, and now it's just a rock infested ditch. Can you explain why you're wet and the back of your boat is full of water? Because Jason pulled the boat up too far up shore, so, it so went the backhand go... came into the water. Uh huh. And you sank? Yeah, almost. <laughs> <laughs> and the guilty party shall do the bailing. Oh, look at the stove. Jonathan, you you look the part, so we've got to leave you here. Oh, okay, yes. I'll, yeah. spend, I'll spend the winter, I'll come out. Chewing backy. Backy. Oh, and spitting. Spitting in the. Very good. This is meant to be a grade 3 rapid in, in the guidebook. I'll rotate the guide page so it's running the same way and you can see here in low water there is nothing and it's just a case of dodging through and you're on the same level. Grade 1 and a bit maybe for dodging the rocks at the bottom.
we'd camped uh, up above uh, this rapid on the right there so we ran the boat through empty a lot of fun and then from the campsite when we left we just portaged the gear down and reloaded Dead centre on the map is a very large island. The channel down each side is three kilometres or so. And it was very low water. And in that northern channel, we ran out of water, but committed so far that it wasn't worth going back. We were portaging, sliding along the dried up riverbed to get back to deeper water. Jason and Bert start off well down this rapid, some good correction at the front and pretty well on line to get the gap between all the rocks here. But at this point they need to start moving right and they're just not committing hard enough to that and that leads them directly to a brooch. It was serious enough that I put the camera down, um, just got a little bit of footage there. Both of them were safe, but I was concerned about the boat. It wasn't a problem, Jason was washing into uh, an easy section of water. Bert stayed there and I told him to stay because I was going to need help. And in the end we put a rope on it, uh, some people pulling from this bank that we were photographing from. I crossed over to help Bert and we sort of helped lift the boat from the back. And we pulled it off without too big a problem and more importantly no damage. Now for the second time we ran out of water. There are three channels two of which that are in the guide are recommended and we just ran out of water. No film because I was so demoralized.
but you pick yourself up and you get it done. Camp was very welcome that night, even with rain. But with tarps up, both for the cooking area and individually over some of the tents, we were comfortable, we could get ourselves sorted easily. Started this with, like I wouldn't ever start without cold Morning. Start. Good morning. Think so, Pete. Think so. Yeah. The first time I'd been here was 2008, and the rapid that enters into this steel pool at the far end had gone into massive flood. What a contrast! Superb. And it's the red one. Is it? Yep, that's not a spot. How do you know? Which planet is it being the red one? This is a Kiko Rapid. On the three previous occasions I've been here, the entrance has been really nasty with a big stopper wave across the river. And we've portaged it across the far bank, easy enough to do. But this time we took a look, didn't want to paddle it with all the rock around, but a nice lining exercise.
this is Lagoon Run, a rapid that I've really enjoyed on previous occasions. But now, yet again, it's blocked by rocks at the bottom. What I'll do is put some photos in to show a more normal level taken from the campsite on the other riverbank and looking down on it. It's going, it's good. Into the white, let it run, let it run. Now. In higher water, this is an absolutely classic run. With big stopper on your left, and then as you come past that, an even bigger one on your right, but you can clip the end of the first, and that shoots you past the second one. And the only issue is the boily water towards the end. After another night, it was flat water to the end, under the road bridge, which didn't exist the first time I paddled this river. We paddled past the Bloodvane village. We'd go back there for the pickup. But we wanted to get down really so we could see Lake Winnipeg. And there it was through the gap. We had arranged our pickup in the village of Bloodvane. Our driver had got there. Uh, got it sorted. Said, did you see any bears? Nope, we didn't. Would you like to see some bears? Yes, we would. So we went off to the town rubbish dump. Hi folks, I hope you found that interesting and helpful. And what you can do is you can press like, you can subscribe and comments are always welcome. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a link in the description below for buymeacoffee.com. My own book, Canoeing, is available directly from myself, but there are links in the description below for easy buys in North America or the rest of Europe. Thank you for watching, and thank you for the support.